The future has arrived, and life has changed. Just as the Bronze and Industrial Ages transformed life, we are in a new age of technology and human evolution. Artificial intelligence is changing every aspect of human life with the potential to make life better. Just think, what's happening right now? Technology allowing us to communicate worldwide remotely in real time. Self-driving and flying cars, commuter flights to outer space, drones able to assist rescuers in natural disasters, robots capable of providing care and autonomy for the elderly and disabled, surgery performed by robots, robot nurses able to handle exhausting tasks so that human nurses can spend time with patients, prosthetic limbs connected to the human neurological system, and 3D printing of functional human organs for life-saving transplants. If you're experiencing a combination of curiosity, doubt, excitement, anxiety, you're not alone. The majority of people worldwide are concerned with potential negative consequences of AI, like data privacy abuse or job loss. And these are essential to address. Yet the best of AI is being designed to help us, not to harm or replace us. I understand the fears and concerns. I had them. But once I began exploring, I was thrilled about the astounding opportunities for social good. Darwin's theory of survival includes adaptability, and we are all capable of adapting. I've adapted over an extraordinarily diverse range of fields, including wellness, business, research, art, education, psychology. And now, collaborating internationally with people developing the ethical standards for the design of AI, considering how human well-being is affected. There are people working on this. Perhaps most importantly, I come to this as a mother, concerned with the future for our children and for all of us. Realizing that getting involved with the fear would not help me or anyone. It reminded me of something I learned from my daughter when she was a toddler through her childhood excitement and natural wonder, grabbing my face in the morning and saying, Mama, it's a brand new day. I continue to learn from that beautiful idea, especially now, to embrace what is and what is to come. I believe humans have an extraordinary role to play in the development of AI, and that by being more human, we'll develop the best ways to use, design, work, and live in harmony with intelligent machines. With the lines of reality seeming uh, blurred with the newest avatars and bots being designed to replicate human behaviors with astounding accuracy. It's important to remember that these technologies are designed by humans and that humans are needed to model what's being programmed. We can use our best human abilities, our emotional, social, and creative intelligence to parent and collaborate with new technologies so that we and they together can create new opportunities, new jobs, new activities in our daily lives that can also help us meet our need for a sense of purpose. There are many skills to be leveraged, but to start with, emotional intelligence, the ability to perceive, understand, manage, and use our emotions. This requires physical and psychological awareness of our feelings. We practice this by checking in multiple times a day and asking, how do I feel? And then, why? And what do I need to do to take care of myself in this moment? I feel like my head is about to explode. I am so frustrated I can't understand this new computer system. I need to stop and go take a walk. Or my stomach is tied in knots. I am terrified right now. I need to breathe. By practicing emotional intelligence, we decrease stress, which increases our mental, emotional, and physical well-being, and our ability to make positive decisions. 
Then there's social intelligence. Here we use emotional intelligence to relate to others with compassion and empathy, to communicate, to constructively handle conflicts. We can best practice social intelligence by listening, allow people to finish what they're saying without being interrupted, and paraphrase if needed what you hear or ask questions for clarification. I think I just heard you say this. Is that what you meant? And since the majority of communication actually occurs on a non-verbal level, it's important to pay attention to tone and body language and actions. This fills two of our other needs, to be heard and to connect. Because intelligent machines are also being designed to be able to imitate our ability to read and respond in predictable and appropriate ways, like good parents, we can imbue our interactions with them with our best behaviors, as my dear friend does when he says, excuse me, Siri, would you mind looking that up for me, please? Thank you. For right now, this is not the same as the interactions and relationships that we have with other living beings. The listening and communication we are capable of includes not only our conscious and unconscious minds, but what happens in our hearts. Just think how we interact with our closest loved ones and communicate just by glancing across the room or what we communicate with a hug or when we hold or look into the eyes of an infant. Finally, creative intelligence. Here we use the imagination to come up with original ideas central to problem solving. Every human being is creative. And although creativity is not always about making art, artists can help us understand the process. American artist Jacob Lawrence beautifully describes it. Artists are constantly looking for something and they don't always know what. Creativity is about asking questions without answers, about allowing mistakes and accidents to become learning and discovery. We practice with curiosity. Daydream, draw, write without an expected outcome. Ask, what don't I know? Ask, what if? What would be some of the most outrageous ways to make something happen? Da Vinci asked, what if human beings could fly like birds? Harriet Tubman, what if we could find a system to free the enslaved? 17-year-old Deepika Karup, what if we could use solar energy to purify drinking water. Again, even though that intelligent machines are capable of imitating our ability to be creative and even find solutions based on new pro or programmed information, think tanks of the world's top neuroscientists study the unique human capacity for imagination. Miraculous ideas born out of minds, hearts, values, intuition, fantasies, genetic memories, and the ability to connect through all of our senses on a quantum energetic level. The invitation for us is to contribute to the good of AI by practicing our best human skills, understanding that these are skills to practice for a lifetime. Beginning today, let's nurture our greatest strengths and abilities to positively transform our world hand in hand with AI. In the inimitable words of the iconic Mr. Spock and my daughter, may we all live long and prosper. It's a brand new day. I'm Marisa Zalabak, and I am a speaker who dares. <laughs>